7.4 geometrically defined vectors and applications. All right, so now we're getting to put everything we've learned in trig together in one section, pretty much like the major uh, way we can apply trigonometry. It's, it's using vectors. Vectors are found in everything. It's force, it's physics, it's, uh, if you like, um, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, they use vectors. Um, and uh, that's what we're going to apply it today. So basic terminology, um, scalar, the magnitude of a quantity, it can be represented by a real number, a vector. Uh, a vector is, is a, um, in the plane is directed line segment, consider vector OP or with a little line on top of it, OP. Um, array, not a line. O is called the initial point, P is called the terminal point. So this is our vector, it would go O to P, so that's vector OP. It's starting at O and it's going out towards P. Uh, magnitude, length of a vector expressed by absolute value of OP. Uh, two vectors are equal if and only if they have the same magnitude and direction. So vector OP and PO have the same magnitude but opposite directions. Uh, because this is going O to P, this is P to O. So here's some examples. Uh, A and B, same direction, same length, those are equal. C, D, same. Uh, A does not equal E because this one is going up and to the left, this one's going up and to the right. And then A and F don't aren't equal because A, it's a long, um, vector and f is a short one. All right, sum of two vectors. The sum of two vectors is also a vector. Uh, the vector sum a plus b is called the resultant. The sum of a vector v and its opposite v has a magnitude zero and is called the zero vector. To subtract vector b from vector a, find the vector sum a plus minus b. So this is what we're talking about. Um, we can add two vectors. So here we have vector A and vector B, and we can add them to find this red line, A plus B, called the resultant force. And if we want to subtract vectors, uh, we would subtract our vectors to find out our red line. Scalar product of a vector. The scalar product of, of a real number k and a vector u is the vector k dot u, while uh, magnitude k times the magnitude of u. So it's kind of like scalar uh, product of vectors. So if we wanted to do 2u, it would be double the length of u. If we wanted to do negative 2u, it would be double the length of u, but going down. If we wanted to do uh, one and a half u, right, it, that's about the red one, it's about one and a half u's. And if we wanted a half u, it would be half of the black u. All right. Most of that we are not going to use, but it's terminology I had to give you so when you get to using it in calculus, you know what we're talking about. Properties of parallelograms. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel. The opposite sides and opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal, and adjacent angles, angles of parallelogram are supplementary. So these are key things that we are going to use today. Um, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, but not necessarily bisect the angle of a parallelogram. So when you cut a parallelogram with bisecting rays or segments, they cut each other in half, but they don't cut the angle in half. Not necessarily. All right, let's find the magnitude of a resultant. Two forces of 15 and 22 newtons act on a point in the plane. A newton is a unit of force that equals 0.225 uh, pounds. If the angle between the force is 100 degrees, find the magnitude of the resultant force. Let's just draw out uh, what we're talking about. We have two forces. One is 15. I'm going to say that's our 15. And then we have another one that's 22 newtons. It's always helpful. It doesn't matter what you do, but just draw them going um, like making a perpendicular line or a perpendicular intersection so, because you want to create a parallelogram. And you can create a square because a square or a rectangle is a parallelogram. 
And then it's acting on a point in the plane. So acting on a point in the plane, that's the point it's acting on. So it tells me the angle between the forces is 100 degrees. We want to find the magnitude of the resultant force, or excuse me, a uh, resultant vector, meaning it's this thing right here. We want to find that, and we label that as V. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to finish this triangle, or excuse me, uh, this parallelogram. Sorry, we used to talking about triangles. Hopefully you're a better drawer than I am. There we go. We're going to finish this parallelogram off, and we're going to label what we know. So we know directly across from 15 is 15 newtons. Directly across from a 22 is 22 newtons. We know that technically this whole angle right here is 100 degrees. So now we want to look at it as like one triangle. There's two triangles here, but only look at one. So what we're going to be doing is like we're going to be looking at this triangle right here. So what we're trying to do is find a side. So we're trying to find side V. Now if we're trying to find side V, let's see if we can find the angle directly across from it. So directly across from B is this angle right here. And we can find it because property 2 states the opposite sides and opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Great, we know that. Adjacent angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. So we can find this angle right here by doing 180 minus 100. And we get 80 degrees. So we know that this angle right here is 80 degrees. So we're given two sides and an angle, and we need to find the opposite side. Do any of them match? They don't. None of them match. So we are going to be, use, be using law of cosines. So we have b squared equals, it doesn't matter, you can use a, you can use b, you could use b, you could use c. It doesn't matter what variables you use, because variables just represent what you're going to be, what numbers you're plugging in here. So we're just going to use a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine v. Remember, these two always have to match. The side has to match the cosine angle. We don't know v squared. We're trying to find it. A and B, they're interchangeable here, but they're going to be 15 and 22. You decide which one's going to be A. You decide which one's going to be B. I'm going to decide A is 15. So we have V squared equals 15 squared plus 22 squared. Minus 2 times A times B. So A is 15. B is 22. And that's cosine V. The cosine V directly across from V is 80 degrees. So you can plug this into your calculator. You'll get V squared. My bad, wrong color. You'll get V squared uh, equals 594.3922. We take the square root, and we get V is approximately 24.3801602. So using our significant digits, only two significant digits here, we have 24 newtons. So the magnitude of our resultant vector or resultant force is 24 newtons. You're pretty much always going to use law of cosines. That's a, that's almost a given. Um, also, you're pretty much um, always going to do the supplementary angle to find that resultant force because it's always going to be directly across from the angle you need to find using the supplement. So this is about the process you're always going to be using to find the magnitude. Or it's going to be in there somewhere. Okay. All right, the equilibrium. Sometimes it is necessary to find a vector that will counterbalance a resultant. The opposite vector is called the equilibrium. The equilibrium of a vector u is the vector negative u. So it's like uh, if you're playing tug of war and you both are 
pulling it with the same force. So one is pulling it left in one direction, one is putting it right in one direction, but you're pulling it at the same force, so nothing's moving. So you're equal. That's the equilibrium. All right, find the magnitude and direction of an equilibrium. Find the magnitude of the equilibrium of forces of 48 newtons and 60 newtons acting on a point A if the angle between the forces is 50 degrees. Find the angle between the equilibrium and the 48 newton force. All right, this is going to take a pretty cool drawing to figure out what we're doing. First things uh, first, let's go ahead and draw our forces that we're given. So we're given a force of 48 newtons. We're given another force of 60 newtons. And then we, uh, we know that there is a um, resultant force. So our resultant force is right here. And we say that's V. We're going to finish off our parallelogram. It's a parallelogram. Don't judge. I'm, you know, I'm not the best at drawing. I got to fix That's bad. I got to fix that. Okay, let's see if we can make that better. I'm going to cheat my way through that one. <laughs> there. Better. More of the same. All right. So let's label. It's saying that it's acting on point A. So they're both acting on a point A. So let's label the rest of our parallelogram we have a b c d we just go we usually that's just the order we go in that's how we like to um do things all right now it tells us the angle between that force is 50 degrees so right here it's telling us it's 50 degrees all right, let's figure out that. That's just what we're given. Now, we can figure out a whole lot more than this before we actually start to use formulas. We have to continue figuring out what we're doing. So let's go ahead and do this angle right here because we can do 180 minus 50. And we get 130. So we know that this angle is 130 now. So since we know that, uh, this side is 48, here we have 60, that is a 50 degree angle, and then across we have the 130 degree. Cool, we filled out our parallelogram completely. So now that we filled out our complete parallelogram, let's figure out what is it asking us to do? What is it asking us to find? You know, like what, what are we trying to do here? All right, it's asking us to find the angle between the equilibrium and the 48 Newton force. I have to get a color I haven't used. Orange. Okay. It's asking us to find... Let me back up. Okay. It wants us to find the equilibrium... The equilibrium force. That's this right here. In the opposite direction, instead of V though, it's negative V. So here we actually have another parallelogram because we know this side right here, because it's opposite, we have 48 Newtons. We don't know the white side, the white dotted side, and we don't know negative V. We don't know those sides, so we have to find those sides now. But what it's really asking is the angle between the equilibrium and the 48 newtons. It's asking for this angle right here. So the first thing that we need to do is that we have one parallelogram filled out, but we need to fill out the other parallelogram. And we can. We can start filling out a lot of this uh, uh, parallelogram. So we know that 
negative v and v, they're going to be the same number, but one is just negative, one is just positive. So let's go ahead and start there. So let's find v. So we have v squared equals uh, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine v. So a and b, you make, you make what you want a and b. Um, I made a 48. And then b is 60. Minus 2 times a, b, so 48 and 60. And then cosine v, so cosine 130. Plug that into your calculator, we get v squared uh, is approximately 9,606. 0.456632, we take the square root. So we get V is approximately 98 newtons. So we know this force now. It's 98. That means our other force, it's still 98 newtons. It's just in the negative direction, but it's still a positive force. All right, so we know that this is 98. That means that side is 98. See, we're getting there. All right, so now what we're going to find, uh, we need to find out one of these. We need to start finding angles in our new dotted parallelogram. So we can't figure out this angle yet, the orange angle right here. We can't figure that out yet. Uh, but what we can do is figure out our angle we have over here because you're going to see why why find that angle because once we find that angle aren't adjacent angles supplementary so once we find this white angle we can go ahead and find the supplement so it'll give us our answer we're going to use a law of cosines here so we have to find our angle right here so that's going to be sine theta over directly across My bad. All right, so to find this white angle here, we know that we can also get it from this little angle right here because that's our transversal. So we know that these are, um, alternate angles. So we know that they're equal. So we have, we're looking at this angle right here. So opposite is 60. And that equals our angle that we only have in this triangle right here. So we're looking at this triangle now right here. So we have sine 130. And then opposite 130, we have 98. We cross multiply. So we have 98 sine theta equals 60 sine 130. We divide by 98. So we get sine theta is approximately 0 0.46900680019. So we take that inverse. So we have our theta, remember take the inverse, and our theta will now become 28 degrees. It comes out to 27.9698, uh, 4519, but we rounded it to 28 degrees. So we now know that this is 28 degrees, so therefore uh, we have the same angle, 28 degrees, right here. So now we can finally find that missing angle by doing 180 minus 28 degrees. And we get 152. So theta is 152 degrees. All right. That is a difficult one uh, because we have to really apply everything in chapter seven to this. Okay. All right. Example three. Finding a required force. Find the force required to keep a 50 pound wagon from sliding down a ramp. Um, inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal. Assume that there is no friction. 
This is a perfectly glide, has a nice gloss on the top of this ramp, no friction whatsoever. So what we're trying to find is uh, the force required that we need to hold it up. So like, how much will we have to force to apply to keep this wagon from slowing down? So what we're actually trying to find is this right here, this red one. We're trying to find AC. So if we're trying to find AC, let's figure out what we're actually given. Um, it's telling us that the ramp has an incline of 20 degrees. So that means this right here, and it labeled it, this right here is 20 degrees. So we're given an angle. It's angle B, it's 20 degrees. And then we're given a side. We're given side C. Is it opposite from C is side C. So if we're given an angle and we have to find the opposite and we have the hypotenuse, can't we just use Sokotoa? Oh, I know, man. It has been a long time since we've talked about Sokotoa. Um, but we are, that's why I said we're actually pulling everything we've learned from this semester. So we can use Sokotoa because we want to find the opposite across from B and we're given the hypotenuse because it's directly across from the 90 degree angle. So we have sine 20 degrees because and then opposite the 20 degree angle is AC our hypotenuse which is opposite the 90 degree angle is 50 so we simplify we have 50 sine 20 degrees equals AC plug that into your handy dandy calculator and you get 17.1010717 which we can round to 17. So you need 17 pounds of force to keep this wagon up. It's a pretty heavy wagon. All right, a force of 16 pounds is required to hold a 40 pound lawnmower um, on an incline. What angle does the incline make with the horizontal? So I want you to you should be doing this. Pause and see if you can get it. Um, you are going to be using Sokotoa again. So pause, use Sokotoa, and see if you can get your angle. Okay. So we're trying to find the angle now. So we're trying to find angle B. So we have opposite angle B. Opposite angle B is 16. And then we're also given the hypotenuse again. So if we're given opposite and hypotenuse and we need to find the angle, we can use Sokotoa again. So we have sine B equals opposite over hypotenuse, so 16 over 40. So we just take the inverse. You can also convert 16 over 40 to a decimal and it'll um, still do the same thing. It's 0.4 as a decimal. So we plug it in and we get B is approximately 23.5781784.8. So we round that to get angle B is approximately 23.6 degrees, three significant digits. All right, last example. Last example of the semester, technically. Crazy, right? I don't know. It is to me. All right, a ship leaves port on a bearing of 28 degrees and travels 8.20 miles. The ship then turns due east and travels 4.30 miles. How far is the ship from the port? What is the bearing from the port? So what is the bearing from the port? What the heck is it asking? It's asking us for this whole thing right here, that whole angle. Okay. So it gives us a lot. It gives us that it leaves the port at 28 degrees. That's right here. I'll highlight it. It gives us that. 
It also gives us that it travels 8.20 miles. That's right here. And then it turns east for 4.30 miles, so it goes east, so for 4.30 miles. It does not give you 118. I'll show you how to find that. Um, I accidentally put that in there when I did the drawing, but we'll I'll show you how to do that, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do first is find angle NAP. So we're gonna find this angle right here. So NAP, we can get that because if we just look at the one triangle right here, we can do that because we have two angles already. So if we're given two angles, because that's a 90 degree angle, we can do 180 minus 28 minus 90. And we get our angle of 62 degrees. So this right here is 62 degrees. Awesome. Now we can find angle P a e right here remember it's not given to you i accidentally put it there so we can find angle p a e by doing the same thing um we can do 180 minus the 62 we found because they're supplementary angles and that's how we got the 118. So these angles right here are supplementary. That's why we can do 180 minus 62. And that's how the 118 happens. All right. Now let's just start filling the rest out. So what we're missing, we have one part of the angle, right? We have one part, but we're just missing this little part right here. So we need to find that little angle. So to find that little angle, we need to find as much as we can about this triangle that it's a part of. So let's go ahead and find side PE. So side PE, this side right here. Let's find that side. So we have PE squared equals, let's use what we have in this triangle. In this triangle, we have 8.20. So 8.2 squared plus another part of this triangle that we have is 4.3. So 4.3 squared, and that's minus 2 times A times B times cosine. Let's fill out those A and B. So A is 8.2, B is 4.3, and then we have cosine. So the angle directly across from side PE is 118. Plug this into your handy dandy calculator and you get PE squared is approximately 118.84. So PE is approximately 10.9 miles. All right, so why did we need that side? Well, we needed that side to find that missing angle because we can use law of signs now. So we're trying to find that red angle, which is angle APE. So the side directly across that angle is 4.3. And that equals, so we have a degree and then the opposite side. So we're gonna use 118 over 10.9. We cross multiply. So we get 10.9 sine APE equals 4.3 sine 118. We divide by 10.9. Bring this up here. So we have sine APE is approximately, well, you guys know how to work this out. I'm not going to work it all out. Okay, I will. My bad. I lied. So we have sine APE is approximately 4.3 sine 118 divided by 
We have 0.348318752. So we take the inverse of that. And we get approximately, so APE is approximately 20.3845132. So our angle, we're rounding to one significant digit, is 20.4 degrees. So we found that little red angle that we are trying to find. Now that we have this of 20 four degrees. How do you think we're going to find the whole thing? Yep, we're going to add them. So we have angle NPE, that's what we're trying to find, equals 28 degrees plus 20.4 degrees. And we get our angle NPE. is approximately 20 I see, wow, I was looking at the 28. Uh, 48.4 degrees. All right, this is a little joke I saw while I was scrolling through uh, Twitter a couple years ago on uh, Elon Musk's Twitter. Anxiety is a scalar, fear is a vector. I like that joke.